22 years ago, Tim Russer would say, Florida, 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 right? So here is Florida in 2022, and Ron DeSantis with his 20-point victory over Charlie Crist. This was not on anyone's bingo card. Where did he win? He won just about everywhere. 67 counties in the state. He won 62 of the 67, including down here in Miami-Dade. Uh, he, when he ran for governor four years ago, he lost this county by 20 points. Last night, he won it by 11. He also won up here in Palm Beach County as well, which has been very stubborn for Republicans going back as far as I can remember, frankly. So that is the state of Florida. And Dana, let me show you this here. See that? 1.5, let's move on over, 1.5 million votes was the margin for DeSantis over Charlie Crist in the governor's mm, race down amazing. there last night. And we're wow. going to bring in Mark Thiessen, former speechwriter for President Bush and a Fox News contributor. One of my favorite statistics is that last night Charlie Crist became the first person in history to lose statewide in Florida as a Republican, <laughs> as an independent, and as a Democrat. I don't, I don't know what he do, goes from here. Right. But Ron DeSantis had a huge night. Just huge. Look at the cover of the New York Post here. They called it the future, of course, uh, drawing that distinction. His approval rating, call for number three, 64% approve. And he just is a very, very popular governor in Florida, and he won over constituencies that Republicans hadn't won in many, many years. Yep, absolutely. Look, Florida was the silver lining in what was otherwise a very, very dark night. I mean, voters did us a favor. First, they reelected a great conservative Republican governor in, in Florida uh, by historic margins. Uh, second of all, they gave the Republican Party control of the House, which means that we can stop the miasma of spending, right? And third, they gave the Republican Party a wake-up call. So 75% of voters last night said that they were not only didn't like the direction of the country, they were angry about the direction of the country, and yet they voted for the status quo. Right. So why is that? It's because the Republican Party did not give them a viable alternative to vote for. They were begging for a viable alternative. We didn't. In Florida, we did. We gave them viable alternatives in Florida. It's in the other states that we didn't. And as a result, we squandered an, it, it, we squandered an historic well, Mark, opportunity. Mark, is that a message matter? Because yeah. a month and a half ago, the House Republicans came out with their commitment to America. Yeah. Uh, Mitch McConnell said, this, this is on Joe Biden. It's not on us to give you a reason to go out and vote. It's it's a uh, sorry, yeah, just to be yeah. clear, that's a paraphrase. Yeah, no, I understand. There was lack of a message from the Senate. Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a uh, candidate quality issue. So we nominated a bunch of people that the voters rejected in a lot of these Senate races. Uh, the, the, we have a situation, we have the worst inflation in 40 years, worst decline in real wages in four decades, worst crime wave since the 1990s, worst border crisis in American history, high, worst gas prices ever recorded, worst food prices since 1979, worst increase in shelter prices since 1984, worst labor shortage in American history, which is fueling inflation, and Joe Biden is the least popular president in the history of presidential polling, going back to Harry Truman, tied only with Trump occasionally. And voters looked at that. They looked at Joe Biden. And then they looked at what the alternative the Republican Party was presenting them. And they said, no, thanks. Mm -hmm. And we need to do some introspection as to why that happened. And the answer to the question is in Florida. The answer to the question is, what worked last night? Well, can that be replicated in other places? I think it can be replicated nationally if you pick the right person. I mean, the, the voters are, looked at us and they said, we sent you a message in 2020. Did you not hear us? We don't want, they, they don't want, they, I, and I say this with great regret because I probably spilled more ink in the Washington Post than any human being defending Donald Trump during his presidency. Mm -hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not a never Trumper, but the election denial put people over the edge. Yeah. And, the, the, and at some point, the voters said, we don't, this is, we, we don't want the chaos. We, we, we want conservative, they loved, they, in 2020, voters didn't reject Trumpism. They rejected Trump. There's a big difference. The Trump policies are su extremely popular. So, you know, I just gave you that stat about 75 percent say the country's going in the wrong direction. Before the 2020 election, Gallup poll, 53 percent of Americans said, are you, they asked, are you better off now than you were four years ago? And 53 percent said yes, which is the highest Even ever. Even in the middle of COVID. In, in the middle of the worst economic yeah. crisis since, yeah. uh, since the Great Depression, the worst pandemic since 1918, the worst racial unrest since the, the 1960s. They said, I'm better off now than I were four years ago under Trump. 53 percent of Americans didn't vote for Trump. Why is that? 
And you look at yesterday, 75% of Americans said we don't like the direction of the country, but they didn't vote Republican. We need to figure out, how, we need to give the voters of this country who do not want the miasma of spending, they don't want socialism, they don't want this left-wing direction the country's going in, a viable alternative to vote for, and we're not doing it. Reuters, uh, just crossing right now out of Georgia, election officials quoted as saying, safe to say there's going to be a runoff for the U.S. Senate uh, come four Here weeks we go from again. yesterday. So if, if Nevada holds for Laxalt, the Republicans, mm -hmm. if Arizona holds for Kelly, if Ron Johnson holds on in Wisconsin, yeah. Georgia, yeah. two years later, yet again. Yep. And uh, it looks like we're in all likelihood we could be at the status quo, 50-50 Senate again. Um, and so what? So then you can write a column and you can say, what was this all about? Yeah. Um, if that happens, Donald Trump costs us the, president, the Senate twice uh, in a row. And if you look at all the disasters that we've seen, the, the $1.9 trillion in spending, which unleashed all the inflation and everything we happened, if we had won Georgia two years ago, none of that would have happened. None of that spending, none of the inflation, none of this stuff would have happened. And now we're two years later, we have a chance to fix it, and we didn't do it. It's an indictment of the Republican Party. We need a very big period of introspection, looking in the mirror and seeing how can we present the American. The Americans are begging for a reasonable alternative to what's happening in this country, and we're not giving it to them. And if we don't give it to them, then shame on us. And if you want to wake up on two, I ask people watching this show, how do you feel this morning? Are you disappointed? Are you upset? Do you want to feel that way two years from now, on the day after the election? Because that's where we're headed right now if we don't okay. change course. Mark, thanks. Good to be with you last night. More coming yes. up from you. Yes. Thank you. Uh,